Then Winnetka got a break. In 1933, President Roosevelt appointed one of its own to be Secretary of the Interior. Harold Ickes was a progressive Republican in the mold of Teddy Roosevelt and an early advocate of civil rights. FDR picked him specifically to attract moderates. The self-described curmudgeon then became a Democrat. In any event, he remained a nonconformist, sometimes at odds with the administration. He was, for example, Washington's loudest critic of Japanese internment. Despite this, he remained in his post even after the president's death, becoming the longest serving cabinet member in U.S. history. Ickes led the two New Deal agencies that provided funding for Winnetka's biggest engineering projects. First, he approved the creation of the Skokie Lagoons as a Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, project. Thousands of previously unemployed men, ages 18 to 25, moved into army-like barracks in the Glenview Forest Preserve near Harms. It was a city within a city. Reveille woke the men at 5.45 every morning. After breakfast and some brief military exercises, trucks brought the men to the site where they started work at 8 a.m. Their first assignment was to clear the weeds and put out the smoldering underground peat fires. After that, they built a road through the heart of the swamp. We know it today as Forest Way Drive, extending all the way from Willow on the south to Dundee on the north. Then they started digging. And digging. And digging. Spring. Summer. Autumn. Winter. They dug seven lagoons and channels, interconnected by a series of dams. The lagoons were 18 feet at their deepest, encompassing 190 acres. Using only hand shovels and wheelbarrows, their advance was painfully slow. After the first year, the Cook County Forest Preserve picked up the pace a little by lending them some steam shovels and bulldozers. Still, it would be seven years before the project was finished. For recreation, the men played basketball, volleyball, and baseball. They had boxing matches and swim meets. Night classes were offered, everything from math to languages to history. As the lagoons filled, they were stocked with fish to reduce the mosquito population. Then, the men planted thousands of trees. Most of the trees in the Skokie Lagoons Forest Preserve from Winnetka Avenue to Dundee were planted by the CCC. This aerial shot taken in 1931 reveals how few trees there were before the project began. In July 1937, as if Mother Nature wanted to get in one last shot, the area was hit with eight inches of rain in a single day. The lagoons were ready, but the dams were not open. All of western Winnetka was flooded, many homes severely damaged. The project pushed forward. In 1940, Tower Road was extended to Highway 41, and the Forest Preserve officially opened. The men moved on, proud to have been part of the largest CCC project ever undertaken. Many of them went on to fight in World War II, while their former camp would be used to house German prisoners of war. 
Though he was not the engineer in charge, Frank Wines was on hand to watch his long-held vision become a reality. As a boy, I didn't want it drained or improved. I wanted to swim in its swimming holes, hunt ducks, fish, and play, and just enjoy it as the mystical place it was. must let go. The next generation must improve and carry on. Frank Wines. Then, the men planted thousands of trees. Most of the trees in the Skokie Lagoons Forest Preserve, from Winnetka Avenue to Dundee, were planted by the CCC.